Okay, so in this week's Ask the Expert video, we have with us Elizabeth Evans, and she is an optometrist from Elizabeth Evans Opticians, and she's based just outside Newcastle. And the reason that we brought her today is we want to talk about macular degeneration. It's uh, one of, if not the leading, leading cause of sight loss in the UK. I had an interesting conversation with her a couple of weeks ago, and I thought she'd be brilliant to be on this. So welcome Elizabeth. Thank you, lovely to be here. Good afternoon. What I thought would be probably a good place to start is if you could just sort of describe what macular degeneration is and yeah hopefully yeah we'll have a, a better understanding of that. Right I'll talk a little bit about the structure of the eye then first of all maybe and then also about how it actually affects people. So what macular degeneration is is a, a mitochondria dysfunction and what mitochondria are is that in the retina, the retina is a really energy demanding tissue in the body. All right. And the mitochondria are the powerhouses of those retinal cells. And so they effectively what they do is clear away waste produce within the retina. Within macular degeneration, what happens is those mitochondria don't function quite so well. So that waste produce builds up. All right, and in fact, it breaks through into the retina and you get what we call little bumps. I will show them on, on our, our scans and the, in the practice, but they're really little, called drusen. All right, so, and the amount of drusen and inflammation in that retina is really an indication of the health of the eye. And what that happens to, the, to a person who's got, who's got macular degeneration is, first of all, is that, is that little bits of drusen and um, are smaller is that they're not they can't see quite so well in terms of their contrast sensitivity and what that means to a patient is they may be able to come to the optometrist and they can still read very well down the chart because that when you're reading down a chart in opticians that's white background and black and black writing mm -hmm. and it's highly illuminated so that's your high contrast sensitivity but they may be having problems at home with other tasks under those conditions mm -hmm. so that's the first signs you might have. And then as unfortunately as the disease progresses, the condition progresses, you, you then won't see quite so far down the chart as that your central vision is affected. You can get distortion as well in your central vision. And as, as you get atrophic, the retina becomes atrophic, which becomes just really unhealthy. You'll have blind spots as well centrally. So what that means to a person is that they can't, first of all, they, they'll find it a little bit more difficult at home. They may be putting light on a bit more. Mm -hmm. And they might used to, you know, the, asking their optician for stronger glasses, that type of thing. Um, because yep. they realise something's not quite right. And as it progresses, it may well affect then their, their, their ability to drive and therefore their mm -hmm. independence. Things like shopping, seeing labels and prices. And also they may just, things like reading, watching TV, maybe not be the pleasure they wear because you, you can't see as effectively. So that's how things progress really within the eye. Okay, and how about because sometimes we hear about the different forms of macular degeneration. I think I think there's two. What are the sort of differences there, and yeah, what what are the names of those? Well, people commonly hear of dry and wet macular degeneration, but they've really come from the same same standing, so same form, same um, condition. And what happens is as that that retina as as more um, drusen appear and the inflammation increases the, the retina becomes more unhealthy all right now the layer underneath the retina the, in, in the eye and the choroid that tries to help this unhealthy retina and little blood vessels will grow through or, um, to try and help the, this um, tissue effectively and they, they grow through the almost like weeds through cobblestones of the mm -hmm. of that these little bumps that have been created by these drusens on your on yep. your retina and you might think that sounds like a good thing because it's trying to help this unhealthy retina but those blood mm -hmm. vessels are quite fine and they can leak easily and therefore that's what happens that's when it becomes wet macular generation so the two things come from the same basis the same okay. origin shall we say and then you can get a sudden change in, in vision as those that leakage occurs now there is a treatment for that and, but that's just to stop those, the, the, those leaking ve um, vessels um, and it's injection. Right. So it's not necessarily better to have one that's currently treatable. It's just that it's, a diff <laughs> it's progressed a little bit further, almost. Yeah, because I know that it's something we come across literally every day 
are that people have gone sort of through the pathways sort of on their sight loss journey and quite often most cases people are told if they have macular degeneration that there's nothing can be done it's obviously there's no kind of cure but it was it was sort of conversation we had a couple of weeks ago where you'd mentioned to me about photo bio modulization pbm and that sounded like yeah a really interesting thing i hadn't come across before because a lot of what people are told is although there are no cures there are possibly things that people can do to sort of stabilize but this pbm set well it was unique i'd never heard of it so could you just tell us about this sort of treatment and we should probably just mention to everybody that this treatment is something that yeah elizabeth can offer sort of in her own practice and so it's not a it's something where you would need to book in for a, an appointment at a hospital but yeah could you tell us about that so light therapy isn't a new thing there are other forms other forms of, of light therapy for example um, uv light and psoriasis and there's also like phototherapy and neonatal jaundice so and the beneficial effects of vitamin d so th there are um, beneficial effects that we know about in terms of of light therapy now what ph photobiomodulation does is it it the correct wavelength, the correct intensity and different tissue can have um, beneficial effects in terms of reducing inflammation and increasing blood flow. So it's had quite a lot of applications already uh, and there's a lot of more clinical trials in other parts or other tissues within the body, not um, though we'll go on now to talk about eyes. So there is information there about that. And, and within the retina, and in terms of macular generation, there is, we're still within clinical trials, but the data that is coming out has been very positive. And what, what happens is that within photobiomodulation, it's just three, three wavelengths that are used for macular degeneration. And what they do, the first wavelength, 590, what that does nanometers is it's far red, near infrared light. And what that does is the first one is actually act against those blood vessels that I was telling you about that change in from, mm -hmm. from yep. dry macular degeneration into wet. So it has an effect against that. So that's a positive thing. And the other two wavelengths help by vasodilation. So they in, um, dilate the blood vessels and let more blood flow to the, to the retina. And, and the effect of that is inflammation reduces. So mm -hmm. the first effect that they see in the eye is that you can get an improvement in that contrast sensitivity that I was telling yep. you about that you begin to lose. And that's Excellent. what I saw. I've had the treatment myself. And that's the first thing indication that I saw. So when I was walking in a wood, I thought, oh, my goodness. Every, all the leaves were really standing out, the trees. Yeah, so that's okay. the first impact that I found. And... The, the other thing that happens is that the um, inflammation can reduce. So the retina returns to, to more normal and therefore your actual visual acuity reading down the chart improves. Also, the clinical trials are showing that in some people there has been a re reduction in the growth of the drusen, the, those little bumps within the retina, and actually um, in, it's coming out a little bit in some cases that that is actually even reduced a little bit so the ocular structure may be also affected so which is fabulous how do how do you kind of like administer is it is it is it kind of goggles or is it how do you sort of yeah get the light into the eye as it were it's a machine it's actually quite straightforward so um it when I had treatment, the, the only thing I would say is that it, it's it's a little bit, um, you have to have a number of treatments. So that mm -hmm. treatment itself is, is quick um, and, and easy effectively, you know, but a bit like if you had physiotherapy, you can't have it all at one time. You have yep. to have it um, at, at different intervals. So they, uh, they have put a lot of work into the correct wavelength, the amount of light and and um, how best to basically give that treatment yeah. um, and it's um, basically nine nine sessions and it's um non-consecutive days so like i say monday wednesday friday monday wednesday friday and it's nine of those of those wow. um treatments so it's quite involved in that way so it's really good to be able to bring it more locally to people i had to go down to london for my treatment so involve nine visits south so to be able to bring that to a more accessible place for people is, is in the north is fabulous. Yeah, I think that's really important because so many times when people are told that there's nothing that they can do for people with macular degeneration, sort of friends, relatives or neighbours, they might be surfing on the Internet and 
they might might find out about sort of treatments that they most of the time as in like your case it it will be something where you need to travel to London live in that area but you know a lot of people don't so I think yeah to be able to offer that sort of up in the north I think that's a yeah an excellent thing and I think it's quite refreshing also because it's something that you're offering in like I mentioned before in practice it's not something where somebody's having to wait for a, an appointment at a hospital and to, yeah go through all that rigmarole so and I think yeah it's a pot yeah it's basically a, a good thing to be able to offer somebody well it's fabulous for me it's absolutely fabulous in optometrists because what happens normally is you 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 know you say you have to tell people you've got macular degeneration and what you do every year is monitor it it yeah you know increasing you know it's a degenerative mm -hmm. disease so you're saying well it's a little bit worse or plus it looks about the same and and that, that's not exactly um, you know a, a great thing to be able to do as optometrists is that you know you, you're monitoring it but you're not able to really offer it any real hope to, to people in terms of of stopping its progression so as an optometrist i, I just find it absolutely fabulous to say, actually this may well help you within the clinical trials so far 20 percent of people it hasn't had an improvement on but for 80 percent of people there has been an improvement in their vision in terms of the letters in the chart and, and there's been a bit of a range within it within that improvement as well the best improvement is people who are in the more early stages so the early to mid stages of macular generation because then you've got some retina effectively to regenerate to, to for you know to, to work with whereas the in the later stages of macular generation the, the, the retina is, is very unhealthy so that there's been less success unfortunately with that at that level so that's really why I really want to get the message out there now to people who who have the earlier stages of macular generation so that they have the opportunity to think about it to have about having that having treatment. Excellent now I, th I think you you're right on target with that because we we've just had last week was uh, National Eye Care Week and I think one of the things that I took from, I did a bit of reading to try and educate myself in that week. And I think one of the big things that I read about was sort of lifestyle modification and changing your habits. So if you were doing things that maybe you don't realise are damaging your eye, yeah, to kind of yeah nip that in the bud and, and stop doing that. And I think what you're saying there, because I, I, I can't remember if you mentioned it or not, but you mentioned it when we uh, first spoke, you, you had a, a sort of history of macular degeneration within your family. Hence why you went down this route, the treatment. And I think I'd kind of recommend anybody that has that sort of situation, be proactive about it now. It's kind of like, yeah, you're investing in your health a little bit like, yeah, wait until you're really overweight like me and then try and exercise. It's no good. <laughs> I should have carried on from my <laughs> from my late 20s. But anyway, so no, I think I think that's a it's very progressive. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can help some more people up north and not just people that that either can afford to travel to London or that kind of live in the London area. So that's great. Well, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate that. Um, and hopefully everybody's learned something today. We'll put a link in the video so that people can reach out. But yeah, hopefully uh, we'll speak again soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye.